So in one of my live streams the other day, somebody asked me what I think are the 10 best movies ever made. And off the top of my head, it was a little bit hard to do. I came up with a couple examples that I will include in this list, but I thought it would be a fun video idea to actually really take the time and think about what I truly believe are objectively the 10 best movies ever made. And I came up with a list, but I want to say a few things before we get into the list. Number one is that best movie and favorite movies are very, very different thing. You can't just pick your favorite movies as the best movies of all time, because I want this to kind of be what I believe is an objective list. Now, obviously, everybody's going to have their own list and their own opinions about what they think the best movies of all time are, and that's perfectly fine and perfectly valid, and I think that you guys should put what you think are the 10 best movies down in the comments below, but I want to draw a fine line before we do that. Before I give my 10 and you give your 10, I want to draw a fine line and say, these are not my top 10 favorite movies. In fact, None of these movies are actually in my top 10 favorites. Some of them are in my top 20, but none of these movies are actually in my top 10 favorites because favorites are a little bit more movies that are very resonant to you personally. They connect with you on a, an emotional level. They mean something to you in your life specifically. They call out to you about something that happened in your past or something that you might want to see in the future. You see yourself in a character's shoes or just something about the movie itself that maybe you can just rewatch it a thousand times and never get bored of it. There's a very, very different thing going on when it comes to your favorite movies. Uh, favorite movies are just kind of more subjective to your own personal taste and what you truly connect with and resonate with, and that's what favorite movies are. But when it comes to the top 10 best movies, I have specific criteria that are none of those things. This is not about me. This is not about how I feel connecting to a movie. This is what I truly believe are the best made films of all time. So how do I quantify this? All right, so I have a couple criteria. all right? The first criteria is that it accomplishes its mission, which means what is the intent of the movie? What is it trying to do? What is it trying to say? And does it complete all of those tasks? Does it fully commit to what it believes itself to be, what its themes are, and does it deliver on that premise and even go above and beyond? So the accomplishment of what the film is trying to do is a huge criteria. Also, let's just go with the general stuff. This is the technical stuff, the directing. Uh, the acting, I'm putting all this up here, and the writing, and I'm even going to put the editing. So the directing, acting, and the writing, and the editing, uh, all of these being top-notch, all of these being a 10 out of 10, as perfect as you can possibly be, which goes into the next one, is uh, zero to no flaws. And flaws can be many things. Flaws can be the movie gets dull at a certain point in time. Flaws can be the movie doesn't fully deliver on some of its premises or its plot. Flaws can be you have that one bad actor that doesn't quite deliver the performance up to par with everybody else. Flaws can be the movie goes on a little bit too long. Flaws can be the movie goes uh, should be a little bit shorter. You know, uh, there's many, many movies that are great but have those kind of asterisks of like, this thing about it wasn't good. Really good movie, really entertaining movie, but this thing kind of sucks. These have zero to none of that, okay? So we're going to, the movie accomplishes what it sets out to do. It has the best directing, acting, writing, and editing it can possibly have, and it has zero to no flaws. And then my last criteria, of course, is going to be legacy. Now, legacy is very important because very few movies, especially now, stand the test of time or will stand the test of time. Obviously, time needs to take place to know if a movie stands the test of time or not, but there's many, many movies that are very good, that are very entertaining, that won't necessarily hold up or still have the same impact years and years from now. And so this makes it a little bit difficult, and this is why there's going to be a lot of older films on this list because a lot of newer films that are great that I think are amazing, you know, they still have to kind of hold that testament of longevity. Um, I think the most recent movie I'm going to have on this list is from 2007, which to me feels recent, but is actually like almost 20 years ago now. But a lot of these movies are older because of that fact. So I'm not going to be putting like, you know, a brand new film on here because I just don't think there's been enough time to consider it in the best movies of all time. Maybe eventually, maybe in another 10, 20 years, but 
I, I can't imagine any movie coming out in the last five years being, uh, you know, available to be on the criteria of best movie just because there just hasn't been enough time yet. We don't know the cultural impact it's going to have. And that's part of the legacy, too, is like, what does it mean for humanity? What does it mean for filmmaking? Did it, you know... Uh, change the scope of filmmaking as we know it? Is it something that other movies have taken inspiration from? Is it something that we all know? There's a lot of these movies that you might have never seen, but you know things about them. You either know the story or you know the quotes or you know just what goes on in the movie because of the cultural relevancy of it, all right? So these are my criteria. So accomplishing the mission it sets out to do, the best directing, acting, writing, writing and editing it can possibly have, uh, zero to no flaws, or zero to, wow, that's the same thing, isn't it? I'm retarded. Uh, zero to little, I would say little flaws. I don't think any of these movies have flaws, but, you know, uh, subjective, I suppose. And then the legacy that it has. So that's my criteria. So let's start this list right off. I'm going to go from number 10, working my way to number one, The Seventh Seal. Now, this is a black and white movie that I believe came out in Sweden in the 1950s, and you probably already know a lot about The Seventh Seal, but you just uh, don't realize it unless you've seen the movie. This is a film about a knight, a guy from the Crusades, I do believe, spending some time on the beach and death shows up, the Grim Reaper himself, to take him away. This is during the time of the plague that it takes place in, and he is trying to draw out what time he has left of life by challenging death to a game of chess. Now, that premise alone might already ring a bell in your head, and it's something that you think you've seen imitated before, and it has been imitated many, many times. The reason I'm putting this on the list is because this movie is incredibly impressive for the time period that it came out. It kind of started this idea of making these really artsy style films that many people have uh, imitated over the years. And the actual conversation that is going on, um, you know, it's not in English. It's not in English. None of the uh, not all of these movies are going to be uh, U.S. made. This is worldwide. Um the conversation that actually goes on between the night and death is so incredibly interesting and so appealing, and it's a movie that draws you in basically just being purely dialogue heavy. Yeah, we are kind of dealing with like larger than life stuff here, but it's really the dialogue and the fact that, you know, this came out in the 50s um, and then takes place in like the older time period that it does and the stuff that they say and what goes on between these two characters is really, really interesting. And I just think it's a really beautiful movie and something that that has, I believe, stood the test of time and, you know, I think accomplishes everything else on this criteria. I think it accomplishes what it sets out to do. The acting is incredible. Uh, the directing for the time period. You also have to always remember the time period when you're kind of uh, trying to, you know, talk about the directing, acting and editing of a movie. Like, you know, things are different depending on what decade they are. And when this came out, I think it's perfection. At my number nine, I am putting... Nosferatu from 1922. And just listen to that. 1922. 100 years ago. This movie came out 100 years ago. And we are still talking about it. And it is still influential. And it is still iconic. And it still to this day is a creepy fucking movie. Now, this is a silent film. So silent films aren't for everybody. You know, this was before, um, you know, the advent of being able to have actual dialogue in movies. So, you know, it can't be for everybody because of that. But I do think that it is one of the best movies ever made for several reasons. One, obviously the legacy impact. Everyone knows what Cor Count uh, Orlock looks like. Even if you don't know the movie, you've seen the image. It's even been referenced in fucking SpongeBob. So Nosferatu holds that legacy as well. It is the first real adaptation of Dracula. And I thought about putting maybe one of the Universal Monster movies on here. And if I was going to pick one, it would probably be Dracula or the original Frankenstein. But I think Nosferatu, because it predates it, and just because of the iconic imagery of it and the fact that it was so influential to horror and horror films in general, I think it does have more impact than, even though I like uh you know, Dracula, the, the universal monster version more, I think that Nosferatu has more of an impact. So once again, this is a list based on what I think are objectively the best, not my favorites, because this was my favorite Dracula movie. I'd be putting Bela Lugosi up here, but I think that this one, uh, I think that this one is objectively better just because of 
everything else you know included with the criteria at my number eight you probably could have seen this one coming and there was a part of me that's like do i really put this on the list because this is going to be on every single person's you know top 10 best film list but when you think about it it really is it really is it's the godfather the godfather is my number eight once again the godfather is one of those movies that even if you've never seen it you already know a lot of things about it and when you watch it you will understand just how many hundreds and hundreds of movies have imitated, copied, and just done the exact same thing, done the exact same story, played with the exact same scenes and sequences, how many things it expired, it inspired, how many things would not exist without it. You know, we wouldn't have Goodfellas without it. We wouldn't have The Sopranos as a TV series without it. The Godfather is the mafia movie and it's the one that cemented that genre into its perfection and what everybody that ever tries to make a mobster movie is attempting to be or attempting to top, which will probably never be topped. So The Godfather, yeah, it's got to be in there. And my number seven pick, King Kong from the 1930s. Yes, King Kong. And here is the reason why. That movie is such a ridiculously high technical achievement for the time period that it came out that I don't think as as far as the advent of special effects and digital technology and how special effects in movies has evolved, nobody was going as hardcore with the special effects that were available at the time than the guys that made King Kong. The stop motion effects, the the matte paintings, putting you know picture on picture, film on film, and this is back in the 1930s. You know, we didn't have this digital technology when they were editing. They were literally taking like different film strips and trying to put them together and make this collage and make this illusion of tiny people and giant monsters. They were literally creating technology and creating special effects while they were making the movie. And let's talk about the cultural impact. Everybody knows King Kong. Every single person knows what King Kong is, even if they've never seen the movie or if they've only seen, you know, the Peter Jackson version or the MonsterVerse stuff that's coming out now. Everybody knows that original story of King Kong climbing the Empire State Building, getting shot down with the planes, and that sympathetic feeling we have for a character that was just thrown into a world that he didn't want to be in, didn't understand. He just wanted to hold on to a pretty girl. We can all relate to that. King Kong is one of those movies that just is just so beautifully made and articulately made and every monster movie owes many things to King Kong like even Godzilla and I really almost I almost 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 put the original uh 1954 Godzilla on this list but I think if I'm picking a monster movie it's King Kong cuz without King Kong we would not have any of the others so yeah to this day if you've never seen the original King Kong do yourself a favor. It is one of the best. At my number six pick is going to be Jaws. Now, you might say Jaws is another monster movie, and I guess in a way, yes. I guess you could also say Nosferatu is, so maybe I have plenty of monster movies on here. But Jaws is a perfect movie. Everything about it is perfect, and I cannot deny it. And Steven Spielberg, you know, obviously has a lot of great movies to choose from, but Jaws... Uh, stands out to me for many, many reasons. One, again, cultural impact and legacy. Everybody knows Jaws. It is the shark movie that can never be topped. It is the shark movie. There's thousands of shark movies. It all came from Jaws. Um, and the fact that Steven Spielberg made this when he was younger, and I love that kind of like early filmmaker style, back when you don't have a lot of budget, back when you don't have a lot of clout, and you're just trying to make the best movie that you can, um, and just how terrifying it is, how scary it is, but also it's about the characters. And I think that that's one of the things that might be surprising now if you watch Jaws for the first time because you hear it's this shark movie, but the shark is not in the movie a lot, and it's really about the characters and the journey they go on and this guy trying to do the right thing thing and then the boat trip with Quint and everybody else you know uh so the acting is just like top notch so we're going acting yeah directing yeah the writing of it the character work the dynamics between the characters the journeys they go on and then just the action sequences and what they were able to do with a shark before CGI you know when they had to try to make this work they had to come up with creative ideas to make it work the technicalities of trying to film in the water and everything um and it's just an endlessly entertaining movie and actually I should have put that as a factor too it's just the entertainment value jaws never has a boring moment it's a great movie whether you're watching the shark scenes or whether you're watching the human scenes 
everything about it is entertaining. And speaking of entertaining, and this might be the most controversial pick on this list, but I'm going to try to explain myself. At number five, I have Back to the Future. Now, Back to the Future might seem weird to be on this list, right? But any genre of movie can be on this list. Any genre of movie can count as the best. Not everything has to be super heavy and dramatic and scary and terrifying. It can actually be fun and lighthearted and a comedy. And Back to the Future is on this list because everything about this movie is perfectly well done. Like I said, the entertainment value, every single scene of Back to the Future is ridiculously entertaining and it never stops. It just goes. It is one of the most consistently entertaining movies I think has ever been made. Uh, Everybody, again, knows what it is. Legacy Factor, you have that locked in. You have some of the most fun characters of all time. Marty motherfucking McFly, Doc Brown, 1.21 gigawatts. Just everything about this movie is fun. And so does it accomplish what it sets out to do? Is it funny? Is it fun? Does it have great characters? And does it have a nice, you know, beautiful message tied into it about standing up for yourself and shit? Yeah, it does. It it accomplishes everything. Like if I go to this list, does it accomplish everything it sets out to do? Yes. Is the directing, acting, writing, and editing all great in it? Yes. Does it have any flaws? No. Does it have a legacy impact? Yes. It fits every criteria. It deserves to be on here. Now jumping into a completely different tone, my number four is going to be 2001 A Space Odyssey by Stanley Kubrick. Uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey is very controversial. Some people do say it's very boring. Um, So, you know, that might not, you know, go into the consistent entertainment factor. But I think that if you are in the right state of mind and you view it correctly, I think that it is one of the best movies ever made because it has so much to say about humanity about the nature of humanity, uh, evolution, and where we're going, and the dangers of technology, and the things that might happen in the future, but also uh, being able to make this movie in the 1960s, and that's also the factor you got to play in here, because this was before, again, before the advent of CGI, and while a lot of this technology was brand new, it deals a lot with artificial intelligence, and AI, and HAL kind of taking over the ship, and viewing the hum- viewing the humans as... Uh, something that is a danger to the mission, you know, and trying to get rid of them. We are just now seeing AI really rise up and almost gain some kind of sentience and intelligence, and it's getting kind of scary, and all this was made in 2001. Obviously, the first 20 minutes of this movie are just like monkeys jumping around, which is my favorite part of the movie, but it's about the nature of evolution and just how quickly things change when this monolith kind of shows up, kind of representing that next huge advancement in humanity. Um, It's a movie that kind of captivates you because there's so many scenes and sequences that have no dialogue and you're just going through this weird space dreamscape. But again, it's inspired so many people. Look at Interstellar that Christopher Nolan made would not exist without Space Odyssey. Uh, Martin Scorsese, Spielberg, all the big, all the greats, you know, they all mentioned 2001. They're like, 2001 inspired me. 2001 is amazing. And, you know, Not that this list isn't based upon like Academy Awards or acclaim or anything like that, but when you have that many high, you know, status directors all citing the same singular movie as being like, that's the one, well, that is the one. And now at my number three spot, and this is the most recent movie on this list from 2007, There Will Be Blood. This movie just gets better and better the more that time goes on. And when we're talking about perfection, everything in this movie is perfection, but I think the number one thing that stands out, obviously, is the lead performance by Daniel Day-Lewis playing Daniel Plainview as this cynical, like, dark, disgusting, you know, terrifying man doing everything he can to be as wealthy as possible and the shit that he does to the people around him, how he treats his son, what happens going into his, like, descent into madness towards the end of the movie uh, and just his desire for wealth and seeing all that and the character and the performance and the way that Daniel Day-Lewis delivers every single line, every single emotion because... Like you do see, I I go as far as to say like this is the greatest acting performance of all time. Like it really, in far as far as movies go, Daniel Day Lewis in this movie. Uh, you know the first like twenty five minutes of the movie have no dialogue. It's it's him you know in the ground like working you know as hard as he can. Uh, then he starts you know becoming the oil man and then eventually drinking or milkshake and it's just like 
the performance in this movie alone, I think, is almost worthy of putting it on the top 10 list. But, like, again, the directing style, amazing. Fucking Paul Thomas Anderson, so good. The writing is fantastic. There's no flaws in this movie. The only flaw you could say is if you just don't like... I guess you could say maybe it's a little too long, but I don't think so. But that's the only thing I could think of someone would say. Um, And I think that this will have an absolute legacy. I think that it already does. But I think the more time goes on, the more people will go back and reflect and... Uh, yeah, this movie blew me away, man. And at my number two is Taxi Driver from the 70s by Martin Scorsese. Now, some might think that Taxi Driver is a little bit too high up on this list. A lot of people recognize it as a great movie, but is it the number two best movie ever made? I think so, man. I think similar to There Will Be Blood, it is a character study about this guy that is broken, disenfranchised, disillusioned, super lonely, and everything that's going on in his head. And the movie really makes you understand this very psychologically damaged character and really grow kind of fond of him, but also to the point where he's doing horrible things. I think that this kind of character uh, in that Robert De Niro plays in Taxi Driver is like the catalyst that would eventually allow us to have characters like a Walter White or a Tony Soprano or anything like that. It's a movie that delves deeply in the idea of loneliness. And maybe that's just something, again, this isn't trying to be like, uh, uh, you know, a uh, favorites list, but like something that I kind of understand and resonate with. And so like I see that in the character and it's like put so perfectly on film, even the way the camera moves away from Travis Bickle, like it can't even stand to look at him the way that he doesn't understand uh, how to act within, you know, just society or just with other people. And then when it comes to like the raw grittiness of this movie too, like I I truly think like the violence that happens in Taxi Driver looks more realistic than almost any movie I've ever seen. And, And I really mean that. I mean, like the violence feels violent in this movie and it's not it you might say it's sensationalized but like i i think that it just feels wrong it just feels scary it feels dirty it feels dark it makes me very uncomfortable you root for this character the whole movie and then there's just this like moment at the end where like it i mean he's he's doing something that he believes is very good but it's just very like dark to watch and and there's just something about that just kind of like is scarring in a way, and and it stayed with me forever. And number one, what I think is the best movie ever made is Seven Samurai from Akira Kurosawa. Seven Samurai is, I think, the greatest film ever made because it is absolute perfection. Everything about the movie is flaw less. Every single thing about this movie is absolutely perfect when it comes to the themes, the storytelling, the characters, the acting, the action sequences. This movie has so many ridiculous action sequences that, again, filmed in the 50s, you have actual people all in front of the screen, all while it's downpouring, all in the mud, on horses, having sword fights. It just gets insane. It has something that everybody can relate to. It has younger characters. It has middle-aged characters. It has older characters. Everybody can find something in this movie. It has everything a movie wants to give you. It has drama. It has intensity. It has action. It has a love story. It has remorse. It has great themes. It has uh, just so much in it that just gives you every, like anything you could possibly, even humor, like any possible thing you could be looking for in a movie is in Seven Samurai, and every single possible thing that you could be looking for is done with absolute perfection. It's also, again, one of those movies that once you see it, you will understand just how many hundreds of movies that have come out since it have taken and ripped things right from Seven Samurai, have done either the same story or took in aspects of the story, um, and just, you know, have done basically the same thing that have been inspired by Seven Samurai. When you see the characters kind of break down and cry, like, Uh, When the one character is holding the baby, you know, saying, it's me, it's me. I see myself in this baby, you know, from the, oh my God. It's just like, it's so incredibly emotional. And then you have, uh, you know, the samurai characters themselves kind of coming together. You have this journey of kind of forming the team, which is always fun. You have like the strong stoic character. You have like the younger character that's trying to learn. Uh, you, You have like every, you have everything. And it builds to climactic battle sequences that live up to the expectation. It's like a three hour, some minute movie and you know you're waiting for this eventual fight to happen and when it does happen not only does it deliver but it goes well beyond expectations and it leaves you with this feeling at the end of the movie that's like it's like 
heroic victory, but at the same time, incredibly depressing because you're wondering what everything all meant and what do these things mean and where are things going to go in the future? And I, it's just like everything about it is so professionally made, so perfectly made. It does everything. Like I said, it's accomplished its mission. Um, it, it, it has the best directing, the best acting, the best writing, the best editing of the time. Uh, I would say of the 50s, it's obviously the best movie. Well, obviously, I'm putting it at my number one, so I think it's the best of everything. But, like, no movie even comes close to this. Uh, zero flaws. None whatsoever. And Legacy? Come on, man. It is the movie everybody talks about when it comes to Akira Kurosawa. It's the movie everyone talks about when it comes to Japan, Japanese sim cinema. And it's a movie that, once you see it, once again, you will see just how many things, as far as movies, TV shows, manga, everything, has copied imitated and took inspiration from seven samurai so i fully believe it is the best movie ever made anyways guys there you have my list of what i think are the 10 best movies ever made once again not my favorite movies necessarily but what i think are the top 10 best so tell me what you guys think about my list and down in the comments below go ahead and put your top 10 remember best movies not favorite Top 10, what you think are objectively the best made movies of all time. Let me know your thoughts. Anyways, guys, other than that, I appreciate you guys watching this video. It does mean a lot to me. Please leave a like and comment to help it out in the algorithm. And other than that, guys, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And I'll talk to you next time.